Hello and welcome back. So in this module, I'm going to walk you through the steps involved in accessing the Gemini API using two different environments. First is the Google AI Studio and the second one is the Vertex AI environment. Along with that, I'll also show you how you can use the Open AI compatible API with Gemini. So let's get started. <music> So Google AI Studio is a great way to get started. You don't need to understand anything about cloud. You can just create the API key and get started with your environment. You can directly use the API and it is meant for developers who are building web applications, mobile applications or non-cloud applications where you don't need to use Google Cloud or Vertex AI. So let's take a closer look at the steps involved in building applications that are based on the AI Studio API key. So you can access AI Studio by going to aistudio.google.com. And here there is a playground where you can try various prompts, various capabilities of Gemini. But if you want to get started with programming, uh, you got to get the API key. So click on get API key and here you will be able to see the API keys that are already created or you can go ahead and create a new API key. So this requires access to Google Cloud environment. You just need to point API key to one of your Google Cloud projects and click on create API key in existing project. Now this is going to give you an API key that you can use within your notebooks or your programs that you are creating uh, on your desktop. So this is the API key that I've already copied and set as an environment variable. So this is the very first step. So go to AI Studio, grab your API key and then get started with your Jupyter Notebook or Collab Notebook to access Gemini programmatically. All right, so once we have the API key, we got to install the Google Gen AI PIP module you can do that in your console with pip install upgrade google gen ai command after that within the notebook we are importing the modules so the gen ai and import types will give you access to the underlying platform underlying api that you can use so let's go ahead and run this once we initialize uh, once we import the modules the next step is to initialize the client so we are going to get the api key from the environment variable that we already set uh, and this is the same API key that you have grabbed from the AI Studio API key environment. So once that is set, we'll go ahead and invoke the API. So that's pretty straightforward. Now you're going to call models.generateContent and you can use one of the Gemini models. So in this case, I'm using 2.0 Flash, but you can use uh, Pro or any other family of Gemini models. And after that, there is a prompt. So here I have the prompt that says, who was the captain of Indian cricket team during the 83 World Cup? And then I'm also restricting the number of output tokens to 1000. This is a mechanism to pass additional configuration to the model via the API. So let's go ahead and run this and uh, we'll be able to get the response back and you can directly print that using response.txt. So this is pretty straightforward. You got to initialize an environment variable with the API key and then invoke the client and uh, send your prompt. So that is the first mechanism of using the API key generated from the Google AI Studio. You can also use the open AI compatible API. Now for that, you don't need to install the Google Gen AI PIP module, instead you can rely on familiar open AI library. So you can do a pip install open AI and after that you can directly use uh, the open AI client. But before that we still need to set the environment uh, with the API key and after that we can use the open AI compatible API. So here I am calling uh, open AI with API key followed by Google API key instead of the OpenAI API key and then the base URL is pointing to an endpoint that is very specific to Google AI Studio. So 
will initialize the client and after that you can actually use the same familiar mechanism of invoking the open AI client. So here the model is Gemini 2.0 flash and you can pass the system prompt followed by the user prompt and you can print the output. So uh, this is very useful when you are using libraries that are exclusively designed for OpenAI. Most of the agentic frameworks like Langchain, uh, Llama Index or any of your popular environments or SDKs have compatibility with OpenAI and this is a great mechanism to get started with those libraries. So we have seen two demos. The first one was using Google's uh, own GenAI library and using Google Gemini API directly. The second one is using the OpenAI compatible API. So that is how you can access the API key uh, created via the AI Studio and use the standard uh, Google Gemini API. So in the next demo, I'm going to show you how you can do exactly the same thing, but using Vertex AI. Stay tuned. All right, so when do you use Vertex AI? So if you're an enterprise and you already have an account with Google Cloud, you are a subscriber and you want to use Vertex AI, which is a highly capable ML platform uh, that has end-to-end -end capabilities, you will be able to access Gemini through that. So uh, once you have an account with Google Cloud, a subscription, you can go to the uh, project and you can access Vertex AI through the console. So this is where you can start experimenting with the model or you can programmatically access the API. Now let's see what it takes to access Gemini through Vertex AI. So let me switch back to the environment, the Jupyter Notebook environment, and I want to open this. So we follow a slightly different process and a workflow when we are accessing Gemini from Vertex AI. So install this module, which is Google Cloud AI platform, and then you have to invoke a command line a, a tool based on G Cloud to get the application default credentials. So what it actually means is when you run this command, it's going to generate a URL. So copy and paste this URL in the browser window. It's going to generate a token that you need to copy and paste. So now I am allowing G Cloud to access my Google account and I'm going to copy the token that is generated by this command. So that is copied and I'm going to paste it here. So once these credentials are created locally, you can start accessing Vertex AI. So once that is done, I'm going to be back to my demo and import the modules. So I'm going to import the Gen AI module and HTTP options, which is required for accessing Gemini through Vertex AI. And the most important step here is to initialize the OS environment variables, which are Google Cloud project, and I'm setting this to my project, the location, which is the region, and a flag that says we are using Vertex AI. Now, this is very important. If you bypass this, the uh, application will try to use the AI Studio API and you wouldn't be able to talk to Vertex AI. So once that is done, you can create the client and this client is now relying on the authentication mechanism we use it through G Cloud. So once that is done, you can go ahead and invoke the API just like in the previous mechanism and we can print the response. So the fundamental difference between AI Studio and Vertex AI is the way you get authenticated. Uh, notice that we are not using an API key and instead we use the application default credentials generated by the command line tool, which is the G Cloud SDK. And 
we also need to set additional environment variables that let the program know that we are talking to Vertex AI and not AI Studio. Once you are done, you can clear your application default credentials by running this command, gcloud auth application default revoke. Now this is going to revoke the uh, credentials that are cached on your local machine and which are helping you get authenticated. Now what is also important to understand is Google does provide an open AI compatible API even while you are using Vertex AI. So let's take a look at that. So here I am uh, using the open AI compatible API. So I basically run the same command to get the authentication token and the default credentials cached. And then I import these modules. I initialize the client and create the authentication credentials that are going to be cached on my machine. Now this is an important step before you can invoke the open AI compatible API. After that, we invoke the API, but the most important concept here is the base URL is not pointed to the uh, Google Studio endpoint, but we are actually pointing this to a GCP project endpoint. So if you carefully notice, we are uh, setting the base URL to a location, which is something like US Central, uh, which I initialized here. US Central 1 and then the project ID that is very specific to my Google Cloud project and uh, again the location followed by the endpoints and open API. So this is the URL that you need to set as the base URL and then the API key that you need to pass is coming from the credentials.token and this credentials.token is cached on your machine after you have run this command, gcloud auth application default login. So uh, that is the key and this is the URL. Everything else remains the same and now you can go ahead and invoke the model. The only difference here is the endpoint and the API key. So you can actually see it is coming back with the response and again you can clear the credentials by running gcloud auth application default revoke. So these uh, notebooks are available uh, to you. I'm going to share the links in the description below the video. But the idea is to show you how you can get started with Gemini using two techniques. Number one, how do you use the native Python modules to talk to Gemini endpoint? Second, how do you use open AI compatible endpoints with both Google AI Studio and Vertex AI? Hope you found this video useful. In the next module of this series, I'm going to walk you through prompt engineering techniques that are exclusively meant for Gemini. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.